This Pitch Breakfast video is brought to you by Spangler and Agins, attorneys for Charlotte's startup community. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. My name is Al Pazika. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer for Finsafi. The CEO and founder of this company that I've known for several years now is actually speaking at a conference in Luxembourg in about an hour uh, to a bunch of technology, finance, and actually space industry in that country. So he's very excited to be there. I'm subbing in for him. I've known all about the company for several years now. So lots of questions, uh, lots of answers I can have around the background of the company. But he's had a tremendous experience here at the Queen City FinTech Accelerator, getting much more involved in the banking part of this story. So we'll start off. Um, in banking, we trust not. So everyone in this room is well aware that there's a lot of mistrust around the banking industry, which is very ironic and scary to me, because if you know anything about economics, the $20 bills in your pockets are all based upon the fact that we all believe that that's worth $20. Trust is a huge part of the banking um, system and it needs to be improved. So what's, how big is this problem? How big is the market? Jason is a millennial. So Jason uh, dove into specifically just the millennial market around this problem. And with all kinds of research figured out that there's about $200 billion worth of deposits that are disloyal or unacquirable. So how do we acquire those? So Jason put this up here because Albert Einstein famously said that we cannot solve problems with the thinking that created them. Finsafi was created by Jason, who was a former uh, laser physicist, figuring out how to shoot down drones for uh, Raytheon. Uh, my background is mechanical and aerospace engineering, uh, but we do have part of our team, our CTO is a blockchain guy come out of a couple companies related to that. So we've really created a nice diverse team to not solve this problem from a corporate boardroom at some bank. Did I lose it? There we go. So what is Finsafi? Finsafi is a marketplace for transparent and mission-oriented banking. Those are the two keys to Finsafi, transparency and mission orientation. And that'll become more clear when we get into a little bit of an example here. So our uh, beta product's gonna launch here very soon. This is a uh, temporary screenshot. So you have $5,000, you want to be into transparent and mission-oriented banking. So you get on here and you say, okay, I wanna open up a savings account. And then you wanna pick your mission. Now, this whole idea actually came out of the space community. I met Jason at a space industry conference and I can talk your head off about that, but I don't really have the time. So let's say you are very interested in space and education. So you put your $5,000 into your account and then after a couple months, you start to have a really detailed look into exactly where your money is being used for the betterment of humanity. You also get to vote on where the money that's being feed back into the, into the world is being used. And then our future hope is that it's so transparent with the kind of technology that's available today via blockchain and everything else, that you can specifically see where your money is actually being used in the real world. This is an eco example, so you could know that your money was used to you know, replant a thousand trees in California. This is the main slide that really shows you what Finsafi is all about. So Finsafi is a front end, we have power deposits, so we're going B2, the customers, individuals, but also to big businesses, and we can talk more about that. We have banking partners, so we are not the actual bank. We, we're developing, we've had one big bank partner so far, working on several others. And then we also are on the other side of this ecosystem. So what we're creating is a, like a positive feedback loop of people that are interested in putting their money to work for these causes and supplying these causes with the funds they need. It sort of, sort of goes back to like the original concept of a credit union. A credit union was like a place in a small town that would get deposits from people and feed it back into the local community. This is a global mission-oriented version of that, although Jason hates me to compare this to a credit union. But it is a transparent ecosystem, a digital platform for this ecosystem to make it happen worldwide. A Little bit of our um, competitive analysis here. Uh, we are much more socially and environmentally focused than most of our competitors. We are also skewed more towards the banking rather than the investment side. Addressable market, we already discussed, 200 billion in millennial deposits. Uh, we make our money initially on the interest related to um, those deposits, although there are many more uh, business models to be had once we start to get this rolling. Team is diverse, I mentioned them before. 
um, everywhere from the former NASA administrator to some pretty senior people at some pretty big banks. Go-to-market strategy is pretty straightforward. We are in pre-seed pre, uh, right now, and we have about $120,000. Um, beta development, we're going to launch our first pilot here this, in, the first, in the next couple weeks. And then that's just our first vertical, and that's in the space industry. And then we will go to the other verticals. Our goal is to get to that 200,000 customers, which seems to be the sweet spot for getting to the next stage, whether it's creating our own actual bank and using the, the money for that or being acquired by an actual bank. Thank you for your time. Again, we're not just another startup. It's a financial philosophy. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Very interesting. Um, what's your actual business model? How, how does this actually work in the behind the scenes? I'm still having difficulties really understanding sure. the pure core business model. No, I understand. Yeah. It's, it's, Jason gave me a lot of slides to get through there in five minutes. Right. Um, so the actual business model is uh, with our partner bank, we're generating customers for them. And it's not, and we're mostly focused on you know, individual customers, but we do have some channels to work on like larger corporate customers. We pitched this to some corporate customers and said, you know, why do you, you're sitting on uh, $200 million in cash on your balance sheet, and who's a whip? And the one guy was very proud to say, oh, it's, we just refinanced with Goldman Sachs. And I said, well, why? Is that so that you could, you know, buy another brownstone on Fifth Avenue for some banker in New York City? And these were scientists. This was a big space company. And so that really was powerful to them to say, oh, well, why are we sitting our money here when it could be sitting somewhere in something like this? So that's really the message. And that generation of those customers to our partner banks is exciting to them. So we actually make money on the deposits. It was the half percent to one percent of deposits that would come back into Finsafi. Great. Thank you. Uh, much clearer. Perhaps it would be helpful to, to really dial to in really on, that. Dial yeah. in on yes. that at I the will, very beginning because it feedback. took about half of the presentation before I even started okay. to finally understand. Maybe I'm slow this morning. No, 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 it's no, early no. morning. I, I think that's Wouldn't valid. be the first time. Um, is there, um, are there any competitors that you know of that are in the same space or similar spaces? So I, I have the, the com competition slide yeah. here um, and I actually since I'm a substitute, I actually spent a lot of time researching some of these in the last couple of weeks. And really, there's nothing very much like this. Um, Aspiration is the closest, but their business model is more like, give us your money and we'll give 10% of our profits to charities, which is not what we want to do. That's a very, I would call, linear model. This is a much more systemic model where we take money from our customers and recycle it back into the industry and, and create those positive feedback loops that really can create something much bigger than we hope it can ever be. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, so I'll, yeah. I'll, um, I'll pile on with Eva on the, the question or, uh, you know, and, and maybe it's because I, I only had two cups of yeah, coffee this I morning and it wasn't quite it. enough, so I'm not <laughs> going yet. It's the downside of starting at eight o'clock in the morning. Um, so. Uh, I was halfway through the presentation and I was still trying to figure out kind of where you played, right? So sure. one of the things that, um, that, that I think is critical for any startup to do is come up with, you know, your, either your tagline or your analogy, we are like something, right? And I was, you know, I was wading through trying to sort that on my head and that was distracting because I couldn't, I wasn't, at some point I wasn't paying as much attention because I was trying to sort it all out. So um, I, a hint on that, so back, um, decades ago, one of the things that, that kind of came out that I think was sort of similar to what you're doing, or at least you can make an analogy, is when credit cards, when banks were trying to differentiate what they were doing with credit cards, they came up with an affinity model, right? And affinity cards were kind of interesting where you went to college, you know, your favorite charity, whatever you wanted it to be. My wife used to work for MBNA. Right, Pioneer right, who started that business, yeah. right? Well, I think that's a, re that, you know, if you'd said that up front, we're kind of doing what what those affinity group you know, did for affinity cards early on, we're doing that for your deposit accounts, right? right. That, that would have helped me get focused, but and so you need something that I think helps you focus, because this was an investor pitch, right? Yes. Um, so, uh, and investors are really not that smart, right? <laughs> so you gotta get them focused on, here's what we're doing, um, and, um, and that would have been helpful. <laughs> Um, uh, the go-to-market, again, you know, probably a little bit earlier, we're partnering with banks, right? Um, and, in, in your, and in your business model side, 
I, I think I heard you say you're taking half a percent to one percent on deposits. Well, yes. a lot of deposits pay. That's all they pay per year. So you're you're kind of uh, that that that. I, I couldn't square that part of your business model with, um, you sure. know, how do you sell that if you know, to the end uh, depositor if you're going to take basically, you know, a full year of their their return? Sure. So this is a question that I think Jason has really spent a lot of time on while he's been here at the Queen City FinTech Accelerator, and I'm going to have to defer to him on that answer because he's done the research to realize what can actually be done. And our first banking partner. This doesn't seem to be an issue with them if we can generate the kind of accounts that they want to see, the kind of deposits. So, so another thing, and I should have started with this because it was a really positive, your, your transparency uh, slide that you did, um, I thought that was really a, a great slide that explained sort of where you fit. So I'd actually do that much earlier in the presentation. I will take that advice. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just kind of harp on the, 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 the context of the five-minute pitch, right, yeah. which I don't know how many of those you'll do in your life or career, but it's usually for me it's been at like trade shows or other places where it's like a speed dating thing. So in the, in the context of the five-minute pitch, um, get to the analog faster, right? Abstracted systemic ideas, if they don't come from the abstract to something I can understand in like two to three minutes, then we're... The next two minutes, I'm thinking about the next speed data I'm going to go talk to, quite frankly. So whether you ever do this again or not, so or that's CEO great advice, and I'm really glad this is being filmed because yeah. Jason's going to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys might never pitch five minutes. I mean, like for, you know, former uh, technologists, like trying to figure out how to shoot missiles down. Maybe every conversation's you know 50 minutes, but. Um, so that, that would be, just take my advice with a grain of five I, minutes. So. I 100% yeah. agree, thank uh, you. Nail that. I think the concept of mission-oriented banking, it, it just, I got lost there. Like as soon as you said it a first or second or third time, then I was like, okay, there it is. You feel like a, a, a consumer-focused brand, so having, you know, just recognizing that we are marketing to people, much like credit unions did, and just hitting the analog up front, you know, it's, that's just gonna nail it. And then the only other, just to just keep on the criticism, the Einstein slide and then the, like the explanation of your team, it actually almost turned like in a, into a negative at one point. I was kind of like, wait okay. a minute, like what, like what, it's so, what are you talking about? It's like the Einstein thing confused me, it just kind of disrupted a good flow. And I just, I was like, okay, I'm not sure I get it. Like I, I feel like there's some really smart mission driven people behind a really cool idea. And so if that's what we have, like just try to hit that Nail that dive, as they say. And thank I just you. don't think you got that. I just didn't get that. Okay. Anyway. Uh, very fair. Thank you for your uh, honest feedback. Yeah, I appreciate being, it. Just to pull, put some criticism on top. Um, we need to drink more coffee. Yeah. And I've been up since like 5.30. It's like my fifth cup. I'm waiting for Dan. Um, oh, yeah. And on the business model, to just to, to Dan's point, like I was confused when you were kind of like, here's how we're going to make money. And I was like, whoa. Like huge dislocation to how I kind of see the debt markets right now. So if I understood your model, it just the, the pricing thing again, like just gave me a little bit more skepticism as do these guys really know what they're doing? Um, but otherwise, I think it's a really cool idea. No, that's very fair too. Yeah. We'll tighten that up. Yeah, either don't mention it, or if you have the research to back why you can take whatever that fifty hundred basis point spread is, then just kind of throw it up there and just show me the simple math because it's okay. like you know we're bringing depo we're aggregating deposits, right? You're really an aggregator around a concept which I think is very powerful. Right, and, and I just feel like that got lost in you know you trying to hit ten slides in five minutes or fifteen slides in five minutes. Yeah, Sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah, <laughs> I would go from five to seven, or just have your yeah. CEO just I mean, maybe he already has this, but five minutes. It's like it's three ideas, right? This is what we're like. This is why we started it. Who's involved? And this is how we're going to acquire whatever two point five billion in millennial deposits in the next five years. That's Thank you. Yeah. Can I add on the pricing model just as a suggestion? So instead of focusing on that, the, the, we're going to take the, you know, that piece of the rate, whatever that is. Um, if you're actually bringing net new deposits to banks, they're willing to pay you for that, right? So that I think that's a much better business model to say, here's much bank, here's how much banks are willing to pay us to actually bring a deposit. I, that's very fair. I really I think that's that. that, that's probably true. Yeah, I mean, I think so too. So anyway, yeah. Cool. How do you uh, Thank you very much for this presentation. I have a question on the loan side. Sure. So what problem are you solving for these causes? What challenges do we have in attracting loans that your uh, solution will address? So on the loan side, you're specifically asking, like I mean, it's solving a capital problem from them, yes. for them. What's the challenge do we have right now? 
So it, it's, it's maybe more of this financial philosophy. So if you are Solar City, or to go back to the real world example that we have, which is the space industry company who needs a loan and their choices are Goldman Sachs or a Finsafi powered loan that comes from the people that really believe in your space industry, what you're trying to do for the world, who are you going to choose? And we've never had one person set, as long as you can provide the same level of services that Goldman Sachs provides, which is a big challenge to get to, but not with some of the banking partners we've been talking to. Um, then the choice becomes very easy. Another millionaire brownstone house or reinvesting in the system that's getting that positive feedback loop going. That's, that's, a, that's an interesting question. Just one more point. Like, if you took the pitch from that direction, right, how we're solving the problem and use like the Tesla example, like how many people want to help? I mean, Tesla stock price is, is so, in my opinion, inflated right now because so many people want him to succeed. Eventually, Tesla's going to be borrowing money from things like this, in my point of view. Like, I'm not saying that's the winning pitch, but I love that question because it gets to the disruption of like what you're trying to really, the system you're trying to re-engineer. Yeah, he's a marketing guy, so he's oh, good at that stuff. Work with him. <laughs> Thank you very much.